Hey guys, today we've got two questions um, on the transplant animals topic and that's to do with you know the reasons why we need a well-developed uh, transport system and we're going to talk extensively on surface area to volume ratio so pause the video here, try the two questions out and then continue on to see how I answer it Okay, surface area to volume ratios are super, super easy. It's the same method all over again. Basically, what you need to do is calculate the surface area to volume ratios, which I've done here. And then you need to write that in your answer, of course. But then there's another thing that you need to also talk about, and that's to do with diffusion distance. Diffusion distance and surface area to volume ratio, you need to make that link in your head. You know what I like to do, what I used to like to do, um, was I got a piece of paper and I made associations. So for example, if it said diffusion distance, I knew what to link it to. If it said this, I link it to that. And you only realise that by analysing the, the mark scheme, sorry, and the patterns of it, which I've already done myself when I was in year 13. And uh, this channel is, you know, just basically me giving you patterns that I've analysed. Uh, so I've done the hard work for you. <laughs> um, so that's why when I say, you know, I want you to memorise this, or if I say this always comes up, it's because I know, I know that it comes up. So yeah, that's a bit of a pointer for you. So we can see that I followed that layout here. I calculated the surface area to volume ratios, and then I gave the explanation. So you see, there's more cells in the CMAS, so distance uh, oxygen has to travel is too great for diffusion alone, which links to you know the statement they said over here, which was what um, the immortal jellyfish does not need a transport system to transport oxygen, as it has a very large surface area. The sea bass does need a transport system as it's a larger organism. So yeah, because you know the the surface area, and also the volume is, you know, individually, those numbers are quite large. Um, it does mean that, you know, that distance that oxygen does need to travel is too much, that diffusion can't do that alone. And this sentence over here is something I want you to memorise, because it can just easily be lifted and placed into other uh, diffusion exam questions, basically. And when it comes to this one, I want you to memorise this like the back of your hand. I want you to be able to recite this in your dreams. That's the level I want you guys to know this, okay? This is so easy. And all these points are exactly from the mark scheme, but also they're everywhere in the paper. You can find them everywhere. Because, you know, especially with this topic about transport animals and exchange systems and services, you know, all of them are talking about these key points that are written over here. So what are they? You know, higher metabolic demands. When do you say that? Well, you know, if they gave you um, something about a simple organism and a complex organism, and they're like, oh, you know, why is it, um, I don't know, something, <laughs> diffusion is not enough, or something like that. You'd be like, you know, it's higher metabolic demands. AKA, the organism, you know, requires or has more processes and therefore has needs more ATP and more things going on for it. So that's why it would have higher metabolic demands, it needs larger oxygen supply, pretty self-explanatory. Um, again, this part, I want you to copy down and memorise. You can lift it and put it in other questions, okay? Diffusion is not sufficient as the distance is too far to maintain a steep concentration gradient. When you think diffusion, you think concentration gradients. Remember that. Again, another point, surface area to volume ratio is low. Surface area to volume ratio will always be part of your answer when it comes to um, transport systems. So yeah, this video is pretty much me banging on about how I want you guys to write these points somewhere and memorize them. Because I know that you can just use them Boom, like majority of questions on the topic of transport and animals. Um, a little bit of a story is that I remember in my A level paper, I think it was paper paper one, there's a few questions that I just didn't know, you know, what to say. And 
the fact that I had recognised patterns from the mark scheme beforehand meant that I could just write really generic points and still get the marks. Because you know what the problem is? Myself included, <laughs> uh, back in the day, <laughs> more like last year, um, was that I would get a question wrong, look at the mark scheme, but like, what the hell is going on? I don't know. You know, that's what I, w I used to think. Until I realised, you know, how about I just look further down if I look at the other points just the generic points that are written because you know when you look at uh, questions that are three four five six markers they all you know have the key points that the examiner is trying to get you get you to say but there's also generic ones so then whenever I didn't know how to answer a question I just used those generic ones and hey <laughs> it worked out didn't it <laughs> so um, yeah, that's why memorising points from the marks team are great when you know when to apply them. But of course, as you watch more videos from this channel, um, I will guide you and tell you when to use them. So yeah, remember, the two most important exam techniques are read the question first and state all the obvious points. Over to you, try some questions and let me know how it goes.